testing it. So he goes back, he does a third series D here, and he's back on the bandwagon. Uh, here are the various combinations. Now, what happened in series D is not a trivial issue here. Uh, we'll talk about that again in just a moment. If you want to have another index on this thing, let me show you what happens if you do the individual high distribution versus the individual low distribution. Up here is the time of flight of the robot for all of the long intention trials. Look at that distribution of the measurables, dragged way out to high numbers, reasonably flat in here at the intermediate numbers. Whereas the times of flight, the short intention thing, got a totally different distribution. Look at the major categorical difference between those efforts, all done on the same piece of klutzy equipment, okay? Now, uh, what do we get out of this? Well, first of all, we've seen a lot of it before. This funny behavior of that second series of that operator fits right in with our uh, immense body of data that we put into what we call a serial position phenomena, where operators come into the laboratory, they do fine on their first exposure, they say, ha, I got the hang of this, come back, they do a second one, because alley, it goes backwards, okay? And then, then humility sets in, we come back and we try again and we get back on the curve. We've seen that many times. So, we are seeing once again, let's get that curve back, we are seeing once again a severe serial position effect. Look at the absolute numbers. Those uh, z-scores, probabilities thereof, the effect sizes are all way out there. There's nothing in the middle here. You do a you do a chi-squared analysis on this and you're off the, off the screen uh, in terms of something happening when the operator interacts uh, with the device. Now, if we penalize the concatenations with that uh, series position reversal, the composite scores are much less impressive. Look at all of the X plus Y trials. Look at just the Y trials alone. That last block down there, incidentally, the calibrations, the machine was continuing to calibrate perfectly well while all of this was going on. Look, though, as I say, at the, at the distribution of those things. They're all out here somewhere in the, in the vague vicinity of our arbitrary 0.05 criterion again. Nothing in the middle. And this, of course, we have seen so many times. How many of our data we can look at and say, gee, we got almost up to 0.05. We got a little bit past 0.05. Uh, that is a magnet that attracts results from all of our experiments, and it worked again here. One can go on and speculate now about what the message you take away from this little experiment. But as Brenda has suggested to me to mention, this program began with a simple student experiment back in 1978, okay? A little REG, breadboard REG, klutzy experiment, nonetheless produced striking results that drove us to do it in a little better fashion for the next 30 years. Somehow it's appropriate uh, that this program ended with a student doing again a little klutzy experiment, getting an outstanding result. I leave those messages with you. Be glad to try to answer any questions, but thank you for klutzing along with us on this. Um, uh, there were a series of experiments run by um, someone named Rene Payoc, he was a doctor in France back in the 70s, I think. And anyway, they were reminiscent of this, but with chicks, they were conditioned chicks, uh, conditioned to, uh, uh, to um, feel attracted to this robot. The robot was uh, um, driven by um, a random event generator, but it was actually by a taped 
uh, result from a random event generator, a run that was done in the past. And uh, they, they uh, found a you know, very strong, uh, significant correlation there that the chicks, just by their intentionality of being attracted to the robot, caused the robot to come to them in its random walk. And so it's not just a human effect, it's a, um, it seems to be a conscious intention from some living being, not necessarily human. And uh, I read that also that uh, this was demonstrated in a retrocausal way with uh, random event generator uh, uh, number sequences generated in the past. So that meant this had to be a retrocausal effect. So I just thought I'd comment on that because it re relates Ren to this. Rene Payak was a close friend and colleague of ours, actually. We had the privilege of interacting with him at the time he was doing the experiments. He was sponsored by a common sponsor of programs in this area and whatnot. And the fairest thing to say is that he stimulated our interest in robotic experiments. Uh, we patterned the original studies off of his work and so on. So we're well aware of that. Those are great, great events. But I think you might want to think forward, though, are the implications here. You know, uh, we can now go out and buy robots to clean our living room. We can get robots watering our lawn. We have robots doing sensitive things in nuclear power plants and so on. But robotics has now entered in a very heavy-duty way the medical profession. There's a good chance that some of you here are going to wind up on an operating table someday with a little miniaturized robot running around inside of you in an artery repairing your heart valve or in your intestines doing some sort of colonoscopy, I don't know. But these robots, these miniature robots, involve random elements. And they certainly involve resonance with their operators. They certainly involve an intention. Uh, maybe we ought to be taking a look about the uh, communication between, uh, between physician and robot or between patient and robot uh, going forward in this business. And think uh, John may even mention that uh, Siloron is going to get into the nanorobot business and see if we can indeed, in basic experiments to be sure, demonstrate that they are vulnerable. And maybe we can even make better use of them if we implement this, uh, this dialogue. Thank you, Bob. There is Ooh, one. one more. And this will, we only have time for one more question. In 9-11, uh, 2001, I heard there was an, a random number experiment that happened uh, showing ram, random number changes right before 9-11, 2001. Are, are you aware of that experiment? Were you part of You're that? You're about to hear from it. Oh. I hear about it from Roger in his talk. We are certainly all aware of it. Thank you, Bob. You bet. Did you get this? Yeah.